Hello everybody and welcome back again to Deus Ex Human Revolution. So we made it into this little back alley with the creative use of a dumpster and a random box. And we are here because we need to get inside the police storage locker over here um, to get some evidence for our side quest. So let's have a look at this. And right, I actually do have the code for this one because the ex-detective gave it to me. So we don't have to hack this one. Alright, um, here we go. Find all evidence related to the case. Let's have a look. Serif Industries Incident Report. Incident Terrorist Attack on Serif Industries Headquarters, Detroit. Officer Detective Jean Chepkowski. Subject Confused Witness. Details apart from Seraph's Chief of Security, who is still in a critical condition in Edit, and another lab technician who was lying in a deep coma in the same hospital. The only witness to the attack on Seraph who was left alive is a tech named Arthur Hopkins. Something peculiar regarding the witness deposition or lack thereof. When we first got on the scene, Mr. Hopkins was waiting for us in a rec room near the labs. He was obviously in shock but was quite coherent and ready to give a clear description of the incident. The emergency response team wanted to make sure his condition was stable before allowing us to, review, to interview him. When we came back after his checkup, a few minutes later, he was incoherent and confused. He couldn't remember anything about the attack. We still haven't heard back from the ER team regarding this matter. Addendum Captain Penn. The situation has been resolved with the medical team. Mr. Hopkins' condition has been validated. He suffered from a severe concussion. The matter is closed. Okay, well, that is very suspicious. So we have a witness who was willing to testify and within a few minutes he suddenly becomes confused and doesn't remember anything anymore. Yeah, something, something happened here. Probably done by the emergency response team. And again, Captain Penn is the one who's trying to cover it up. Okay, let's have a look at the next report. Officer Detective Christopher Chase. Okay, he's the one who gave us a code here. Subject, attackers are definitely professionals. Details, quick rundown. There was no trace evidence found at what seems to be the point of entry. The incident didn't last long, but the amount of damage was excessive. There were a large number of victims and yet not many rounds were fired and the accuracy was spot on. The attackers were probably all marksmen. This was the work of top-notch professionals. Seraph confirms that a new augmentation design was being tested just prior to the attack, but that the augmentation itself was unharmed and no files related to it were stolen. The obvious motive here is theft and or corporate espionage. But why then destroy the facility and murder everyone? A competitor could, not, could no doubt benefit from such a catastrophe, but these measures were quite extreme and to my knowledge this is an incident without precedent. I want to note here that I've brought this matter up to Lieutenant Ashbrook on multiple occasions with no concrete results. Yeah, I do agree. Um, it seems very extreme for espionage um, and a competitor would probably be more interested in taking all the augmentations and the data, right? So there's definitely more to this. Okay, autopsy report Megan Reed. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Name Reed Megan, age 32, sex female, blood type O positive, path MD lawn. Preliminary note. I have been appointed by the state to perform autopsies on the remains of multiple victims 
of the attack on Seraph Industries. This is due to the critical nature of the incident and the need for the State Department to be fully aware of every detail without going through an endless array of bureaucratic forms and requests. This is in no way linked to the competence of local ME Dr. Gerald Campbell and shouldn't be interpreted as such. And the diagnosis. 1. Vertebral injuries. A. Vertebrae in the neck area are displaced. B. Abrasions of the bones consistent with severe and sudden stress or pressure. 2. Ligature strangulation. A. Abrasions found in the neck area. B. Hard to clearly verify due to severe burns, but throat seems crushed. Okay. 3. Severe burns. A. Extremely severe burns covering the entirety of the body. B. Accelerant residue has been sent to ChemLab for analysis. C. Absence of fumes, residue and ash in the lungs. So that probably means she was dead before she was burned, otherwise ash would have entered her lungs, right? Indicate burns are post-mortem. Yes, exactly uh, what I've been trying to say. 4. Toxicology report. A. Blood ethanol non-detected. B. Blood drug screen no drugs detected. Clinicopathologic correlation. Cause of death is quick and intense snapping of the neck vertebrae combined with crushing pressure. Body was likely burned after the subject was deceased. Dr. Dana Hall, ME. Okay, so basically her neck was broken and that caused her death. So I guess at least it was quick and painless. Um, we got another book over here. Another incident report by Detective Jean Shepkowski. Probable use of unidentified high-tech compound. Details. While examining the crime scene, Detective Hayward and I both noticed that the area covered by the attack seemed abnormally damaged, burned to a degree that could not be explained by a normal fire or the use of any known explosives. It was the same for all of the recovered victims' bodies. Residue analyzed by forensic lab officers on the scene likely comes from a high-tech accelerant of unknown nature. It seems the lab's equipment and victims were deliberately burned to an excessive degree. The most obvious conclusion is that was done to eliminate all possible trace evidence. But it just feels odd, like something is off. Hmm. That is very vague. Couldn't you be more precise about your um, odd feelings here? Anyway, uh, we got the safe over here. And right, I actually got the code for this one too. Okay. Let's have a look inside. Megan Reed, lab notes. It's hard to fathom it all sometimes. When I made that breakthrough in my research a couple of years ago, I never thought it would get this big. I thought it was an anomaly at first, but it's become to genetics what universal assemblers are to nanotechnology. We're talking about the holy grail of DNA here. Hell, this is Gregor Mendelbeck. The thing is, I have to bury the truth, not the discovery, but how I reached my results, it's become harder lately. I betrayed someone, someone I respected for the sake of my research. I wish I had a chance to fix it, but it got bigger than me, bigger than Seraph. If this ever came to light, Seraph Industries could be ruined. I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm tired. I think I'll just wrap things up for today. Huh. Yeah, I believe she mentioned something like that in the prologue, right? So, what did she do? What did she do? Anyway, um, we have a bracelet, apparently. I'm not sure if that serves any use. Oh, I see. 
This item is automatically equipped. A Reed family heirloom. This bracelet was passed down to Megan by her grandmother. Okay, well, um, I guess I'll take it. But, yeah, um, that seems to be all. So what am I supposed to do with my evidence now? Return to Cassandra Reed. I should head to the Chiron building and speak with her. Okay, so we can tell her what we found out and we found out that there's definitely a lot of shady stuff going on and a lot of people trying to cover up what happened that day. Oh, look at this. I can't... I can't use this ladder. Hang on a second. Give me that box. Now I can use it. But um, before I go up here, let me look around. Whoa, man! That's some getup you got. What you trying to hide? <laughs> that sir actually thinks augmentation are going to help me. There are people in this city can't afford to eat. Well, um, that's a good point. Oh, manhole cover. Okay. I guess I'll have a look at this too. Oh, by the way, I'll take your whiskey. Um, well... I'm in the sewers now, and this is actually quite an extensive area. I ain't proud. I'll take charity. <laughs> even from one of you. What do you mean, even from one of me? I ain't no guinea pig. Ain't no way I was getting all just to keep my job. I Take ain't no up. guinea pig. Drink it all in. It ain't pretty, is it? Yeah, this place is definitely not pretty. Huh. Okay. Even the sewers have vents, apparently. Not sure why. <laughs> so, does this actually lead anywhere? Anywhere I need to go? Because I still have that ladder back in the alley that I want to check out. Um, yeah, this is where I came from. I got turned around a little bit. But yeah, let's have a quick look around the sewers. See what we can find here. Don't get involved in this asshole! Get out of here! Ooh! These guys are not friendly. Huh. Well, um... Maybe I'm just going to avoid them for now. Unless I have a reason to get involved with them, right? <laughs> Okay, we got a ladder here too. Detroit Police Department, no trespassing. Oh, this is back inside the police. Breaker box. What happens if I use this? Oh, it disables the current in those pools of water here. Probably. But, um, I mean, I don't need to go back inside the police department. And that panel was security rating 3 anyway, so... No way for me to hack that one. Okay, um, I don't know. Let's, let's just go back outside. 
I think that's where I came from. And I kind of have to find a way out of this alley. But if this doesn't provide me with a way out, I might be able to use a few boxes to get back over the fence. Okay, let's go. Security rating 2. Does this lead? Okay, we have a vent over here. Let's have a look at this. Ooh, what is going on? Sudden loading screen. Um. Okay. Well. Going to continue on this path. Um, okay. Oh, I'm back in the police department now. Well, um, I suppose that works. I can I can leave the police department and that's how I get out of the alley. So, I probably could have taken this uh, door to get into the alley too, right? Ah, I see. I haven't actually found this door on my um, exploration. But okay, um, I made it into the alley anyway. So, let's find the stairs and get out of here and yeah I um, guess the next step would be to go to my apartment and uh, have a look at the uh, chip we got from the hacker okay this is a way out don't get me started on that liberal Okay, so we made it back out, and uh, yeah, I probably didn't need to do that, but whatever. It's nice to know that there are, you know, several ways how you can achieve your goal. Now let me have a look at my map. Use my home computer to analyze the hub. Chiron building. Oh, this is... Um, also where I'm supposed to look for Megan's mother, I think. So, yeah, I guess I'm going uh, over here, have a look at my apartment, talk to Megan's mother, and maybe I'm going to talk to a few people on my way there. Okay, so it's to the left, right, and then all the way to the left. Probably over here, right? I'm on to you. I know you're spying on us. <laughs> studying us. I really have no interest in your life. Sorry. Why don't you take a, a picture, asshole? <laughs> oh dear. Man, this town is dead. I should have just moved to Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is better than this place? Look at the equipment you've got. Woo! <laughs> Why not give me a little demo? I don't hey, think you want Jackson. to. Long time no see. Oh! Do we know each other? Jenny Alexander. Jensen. My God, it's been a while. Remember me? We used to work the old 17th precinct back in the day. Man, <laughs> I wish I could go with the good old you haven't changed at all bit, but that'd be complete and utter bullshit, right? I guess so. And I think that's actually 
The woman that Pritchard messaged me about, right? She's a police officer and she wants my help. In some case. I like your new style. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm just going to be friendly here. I mean, that's a weird compliment. You look like a prostitute. Yeah, I guess that's one way to put it. You look a little different too, Xander. What's your new gig? Deep cover. I'm keeping tabs on the derelict row ballers for now. I've got to hunt something big's coming. Why do I get the sudden feeling you're about to include me into that something big? Because you're clever. That and the fact that, well, it's pretty obvious. But jokes aside, you couldn't have come at a better time, Jensen. This case I'm on, we're stalling and we could use a little external help. Go ahead. I'm with IA now, and we're working a sting on a dirty cop named Jack O'Malley. Elusive, motherfucker. I mean, men in black elusive. Eh. We know he's involved in drugs, weapon dealing, tied into the gangs. But he's clever, and we just can't seem to pin anything on him. I swear he's got friends in high places. Okay, and where do I fit in all this? You're an outsider. You can go places we legally can't. I need someone to do a couple of things. Break into his apartment, sneak into DRB territory, and finally, go undercover posing as a hitman. <laughs> this guy is nothing minor, Jensen. He's the real deal. Major player, major consequences. We have to get him before shit hits a fan. You in? Um, well, sure, but maybe you can tell me more about it first. For example, about this O'Malley person. How about the target, O'Malley? Got any more info? He's a cop, but he went on assignment with the feds for a while. No reports, no address, nothing. We're pretty sure he got tied up in major covert ops, but never got anything solid on him. He has a badge, but he doesn't feel like a cop at all. Okay, um, and what about the gangs? I haven't walked the beat in a while. Could you give me a quick sit rep of the local gangs? <laughs> you know, gangs are not the finest example of evolution, if you catch my drift. Everything's pretty much the same. The derelict row ballers are still dealing and stealing, getting into fights with Augs, and defacing augmented people's property. Yeah, right. Upstanding citizens. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the Motor City Bangers. Ignorant scumbags just like the DRBs, only some of them are augmented scumbags. Okay, well, um, I understand. But yeah, sure, um, I guess I'm going to help you. Can't let a guy like that roam free. I'm in. All right then, let's get to work. Like I said, I've got a couple of very promising leads, but O'Malley's got friends among the powers that be. I wouldn't be able to get my hands on a warrant even if I had footage of the perp confessing in real time as he's finger painting his motive on the wall in the victim's blood. So I guess we're gonna have to break a few rules. I see. Rules would only slow me down. We have to be careful how we handle this. Hmm. Well, she said we need to break some rules, so... I don't know. Maybe we have to. Suits me. Rules would only slow me down. Hmm. Very dirty Harry of you, Jensen. <laughs> but we still have to be careful how we handle this. We've worked hard to catch this son of a bitch. I don't want him to walk on a technicality. I ag agree with that. Um, yeah, give me a few more details. So, I am supposed to pose as a hitman? What about the undercover assignment? Posing as a hitman? O'Malley's crafty, and even a bit paranoid. He's always using proxies, scapegoats, and red herrings to get us off his ass. But after months of schmoozing, we finally got through to one of his guys. Turned him into a mole. He provides us with information, stuff like that. And he's gonna be my way in? Exactly. Yesterday, another one of O'Malley's guys whacked someone. A drug dealer. There's a witness, but we don't have any details. O'Malley does, and he wants someone to take care of the mess. The usual guy just got busted for possession, so the contact will send you in to pose as his replacement. O'Malley will be waiting for you in an alley next to the police station. And you want me to milk him to get the info on the witness? You haven't lost your touch, Jensen. We think O'Malley will ask you to retrieve the murder weapon, use it to kill the witness, and then plant it on a scapegoat he can arrest later. What you need to do is get that weapon and bring it to me. And what about the witness? We're almost positive he's a member of the MCBs. Once you know the location, you'll need to get there, take care of any opposition, and prep him for retrieval. Prep him? Well, you know, he's a gangbanger, Jensen. 
He's not going to turn in peacefully, but we need him alive. So I guess you're going to have to play this one macho and knock him out. One of our guys will then just happen to stumble upon him. You know, serendipity. Okay, knock him out. I can do that. And uh, what about the apartment? So what am I looking for in O'Malley's apartment? Information, drugs, weapons. Basically anything you think can be used to build a stronger case against him. The more you get, the better. And tell me about the shipment. Okay. What's this about getting into DRB territory? Yeah, I needed to get in there and track down a shipment of weapons for me. We managed to gain access to solid information that will tie it to O'Malley, but I need proof it's really there. They've probably stashed it around somewhere. A cop dealing weapons to a criminal anti og gang? Not a pretty picture. Got that right. I guess we both agree. Nothing good can come out of this, huh? I don't know where exactly the DRB's cash is, but I know there's a bonus for you if you manage to sneak in and out without being spotted. Would make shit easier to handle on my side. Okay, let's do this. You can contact me on my info link if anything comes up. Excellent. Oh, and Jensen, one last thing. To protect my cover, it'd be better if you only contact me again once you've taken care of everything. Okay, um, I understand. So, um, apparently this gave me a new quest. Cloak and Daggers. And it has a bunch of objectives. However, um, this can wait for a while because I'm on my way to my own apartment. I never let t boss be booking me. <laughs> nah, I don't do no tricks with no ogs, yo. <laughs> hey, sweetie, damn you cute. I'm you want to have some fun tonight, sexy? Because I haven't had a hey, in big a boy. Long time. I never let t boss be booking well, me. Well, um, no apparently ogs. most I'm of them fun. seem to think I'm cute, but some people don't like my augmentations. Okay. So, this seems to be the place, Chiron building. Let's go inside. And... Oh, this is actually her. If you ask me, Cassandra Reed. Have you found anything? Please, I've got to know what really happened to Megan. Complete quest or leave? Um, yeah, I guess I've done everything I wanted to do, so, um, let's complete it. I've investigated all of Detective Chase's leads. You were right. Something was off with Megan's case. So, what did you find? Um, a lot. A lot. For example, there was a, a very mysterious um, incident with a witness. There were only three people who got out of the labs alive. Me and two others. One died in the hospital a few days later. The second one, a lab tech, was ready to give a detailed description of what he saw. Funny thing is, by the time the investigators got to him, he couldn't remember a thing. You sound like you don't believe that. I don't. Not from the reports I've read. I think someone got to him first. Right. And we have some suspicions about the Mercs as well. An officer assigned to the case was asked to get rid of a major piece of evidence. Footage from one of our intellicams showed fuzzy images of the attackers bringing something inside the labs. What? What were they bringing in? I don't know. But for someone higher up to want that evidence gone, it must have been important. And... Yeah, the attackers seem to have used excessive measures. That indeed, they killed pretty much everyone. I got my hand on a test report that confirms what was bothering Chase. The attackers use excessive measures to make bodies and equipment unidentifiable. Oh my god, Megan. What do you make of this, Adam? I don't know exactly. I guess the idea was to leave no traces, no DNA evidence that would link back to them. But it just seems a bit too convenient. And finally we have the autopsy. Someone in the government, a man named Manderley, ordered that a specially appointed medical examiner perform the autopsy. He bypassed the local ME. Simply put, that's not a good sign. It sure doesn't sound good. So what you're telling me is we couldn't find anything conclusive? No, I'm sorry. But one thing's for sure. Somebody's been hard at work covering up and destroying evidence related to this case. Somebody with power. Who wanted to erase anything that might have made the investigation linger. 
Yeah, we found a bunch of suspicious leads, but no conclusive evidence. Um, oh, I can give her the bracelet. Or I can keep it. Hmm. I don't know, he doesn't strike me as the sentimental type, so maybe um, I should just return it to her. She probably wants it more than I do. I'm sorry, Cassandra. I wish I had more tangible answers to give you. But I did stumble on something I think you should have. I found Megan's bracelet. I'm sure she'd want you to have it. Oh, Adam. That's very kind of you. Her grandmother gave it to her. She loved that bracelet very much. Thank you for all you did. And, um, do you... Do you know exactly how Megan died? Um, yes I do. Detached, her neck was snapped and her body was burned. She didn't suffer, Cassandra, I can promise you that. Yeah, that's probably what she wants to hear, not the technical details, right? I read the reports. She didn't suffer, Cassandra, I can promise you that. Thank you, Adam. It's not much, but it still brings me some comfort. I miss her so much. Well, I can I can understand that. Hmm. This is not over. There's not much we can do about it. Well, maybe we should spread some hope, right? Don't worry, Cassandra, this is not over. I don't know how or when, but I will get to the bottom of this. I knew I was right to trust you, Adam. But please, be careful. It's strange. I thought knowing what really happened would make me feel better. But nothing will ever justify this. My daughter is gone, and I'll never get her back. I wish. I wish I could be sure she gets justice. Trust me, she will. Yeah, it's still a long game. I'm sure I can uh, do something about that. And I just got an achievement, so I guess I completed the quest. Yes, I did. So I guess the next step would be to go to my apartment and investigate the chip. But let's look around. This people see room conspiracies first. everywhere. They're saying that Lim's personal catalogs mean some people get preferential treatment. Please. Okay, we get a lot of uh, repeating dialogue Man, now. Man, this so town is dead. I should have just moved to Philadelphia. Maybe at some point I will stop talking to absolutely everyone. You work for Sarab Industries, don't you? I think it's terrible all these attacks against your offices. Well, thank you. And the newspaper is still the one we've seen before. Reporting to you? Live. Before you ask, no. Your mirror has not been replaced, Mr. Jensen. Um, okay. Today I've had to deal with petty vandalism, unreasonable demands from corporate clients, and a variety of other pressing problems. So facilitating your grooming had to be given a lower priority. <laughs> Somehow this lady is kind of annoyed with me. I wonder what Jensen has, has done to her that she's so annoyed. <laughs> so my mirror is broken and I can't groom myself. Isn't there some augmentation for that? Where are you, Jensen? I haven't gone all night. Hello, Pritchard. I'm almost in my apartment now. Well, when you do get in there, connect the neural hub to your computer. I've created a secure tunnel, and I'll take over remotely. You can access my personal computer. Who do you think configured your yeah. security protocols? Well, that's reassuring. But yeah, I definitely need an augmentation that automatically styles my hair. Who needs a mirror in times like these? Okay, um, here we are. This place looks oddly old-fashioned. Mr. Jensen, I fixed up your apartment real nice. That special request you asked for works like a charm. Special request? What? Uh, there's lots of room behind the big screen. I put the stuff in there that you asked me to. And thanks for that little something extra you left. The wife will be happy. Okay. Stuff behind the big screen, huh? I'll check it out. 
Hello, oh. who is it? She is busy with a telephone. Out of order. I can't believe he said that. Do you hear that? I guess I wanted to be reminded of what it was like to be with someone normal. You were the one who wanted us to get enhanced. Now you're saying we're not normal anymore. <laughs> well, I'll try not to touch you too often with my cold, dead, metal hand. Oh dear. Okay? Oh dear. Oh dear. The neighbors are fighting over their augmentations, no less. Anyway, home, let's Mr. check Jensen. our apartment. <laughs> well, um, this is an interesting place. And again, it, it seems kind of odd because the furniture looks very old. Like something from, I don't know, the 18th, 19th century. And then you have all the computers and high-tech in between. <laughs> Very interesting style. So, we got a computer over here. An e-book, The Intelligent Circuit. Excerpted from a talk given by Hugh Darrow at the 2020 Human Plus Conference in San Jose. We get carried away with the idea of bolting robot arms and legs to our fleshy torsos, but I firmly believe that the real core of what we can innovate lies within our meat, more specifically in our brains. Deep brain implants are the way in which the human machine can truly be supercharged. Consider our grey matter, our neural DNA has been imprinted with a mammoth amount of information allowing us to parallel process huge and complex data sets in quick order. But for all that, our wet memory is patchy and sporadic. We lack the ability to communicate data in complete fashion. Through the use of cognitive enhancement implants providing neurotropic stimuli, we are capable of creating a new level of neural synchrony, synchrony that can effectively boost brain capacity and via wireless data passing subsystems a form of radio telepathy is a real and viable concept. Faster brain processing more data reacting quicker capable of streaming that data in real time to other similarly accelerated posthumans this is the real frontier. Well that seems to be some very interesting bedtime reading and the book about narcotics for some reason. I wonder what these cards are saying with hope. May you heal quickly. <laughs> the clouds never stay. Dark clouds never stay. Life is hard. <laughs> that's, that's actually a nice detail. He has a bunch of cards on his desk for when he was in hospital I guess. That's that's a nice attention to detail. And oh yeah, the mirror is definitely broken. Call landlord re replacement mirror again. It kind of looks like he punched it, right? That would be such a trope, you know, punching the mirror because ooh, I can't stand watching myself. <laughs> but that's probably what happened here, huh? Okay, I can use a faucet. Oh, I'll take that. Right, um, I guess I'm going to have a look at my computer. And see if I got any mails or whatever. Richard, the hub's connected. I know. Now be quiet and let me concentrate. I need his name, Pritchard, not his entire genetic history. That's not his DNA. It's the data he was trying to steal from us before he... My God, Jensen. Your suicide hacker didn't kill himself. You obviously didn't see his brain spider all over the floor. No, no, you don't understand. The wet drive modification in this chip, it allows someone to hack through you. 
It turns you quite literally into a human proxy. Mm. So he wasn't working alone. Someone off-site was doing the actual hacking. Exactly. And whoever it was tried to hide his location by using multiple satellites. But I may have just traced him to here. An abandoned factory complex in Highland Park. Get me the address, Pritchard. Because if we're lucky, whoever pulled our terrorist strings might still be there. <laughs> I wonder if that Pritchard guy is ever in a good mood. But yeah, I think um, the fact that the guy didn't actually kill himself, but was forced to kill himself, seemed relatively obvious. I mean, he did even say, like, help me, if I remember correctly. Um, but Jensen may not have seen all of the quote-unquote cutscene that we've seen before he entered, but it definitely definitely looked like he was forced to, to kill himself. So I already suspected that. Anyway, let's have a look at these males. Um, Sherry Host. Oh, she's the lady downstairs, right? Mirror. Mr. Jensen, in respect to your latest reminder to have the mirror in your bathroom replaced, may I remind you once again that the item is on back order. The situation is out of our hands and no amount of pestering will make it arrive any sooner. And while on the subject, we are still unclear as to how precisely this mirror came to be damaged. Perhaps you can enlighten us. Thank you. Sherry Terhorst. Yeah, it looks like he punched it. But who knows. From D. Gonzalez to Adam Jensen. Re, your dog. Adam, I am so, so sorry. When Megan died, nobody knew what to do with Kubrick, so I took him in. But I couldn't keep him and nobody knew if you'd wake up, so didn't know what else to do. I'm really sorry. He was a sweet dog. Diane. Oh, they had a dog and I guess the dog got put down, maybe? Oh, that's sad. And we have one mail from um, Miss Magulis. Welcome home. Hello, Adam. This is just a quick note to welcome you to your new apartment on behalf of Serif Industries. If you need anything or something is not satisfactory, please do not hesitate to let me know and I will pass it on to the building management. You will notice there is a hidey hole in of sorts built into the wall. The code for this is 5375. Oh, is this was what the janitor was talking about? If your key is lost or damaged, I have a backup. Mr. Serif does also, but try to reach me first. The lease is for a year and has been prepaid in full. You shouldn't receive any questions about rent, but if you do, please feel free to refer them to me. I wish you many happy years in your new home, Athene Margulis. Okay, well, they certainly take care for their employees, or at least for me. Adam, it's David. Let me guess. You're sending me to Highland Park. Not just yet. Frank's figured out why the network's been compromised. There's a persistent transmission coming from Derelict Row. Street gang territory? Well, our dead friend was posing as an Antioch. Who better to hide with than the D-Row ballers? Right. I'm on my way. Okay. So... What exactly would I have to do next? Locate and shut down antenna in derelict row. Okay. But I may have a look at my other side quest first before I continue with that. Living with your new cybernetic prosthetic. All you need to know about treatments, recovery and functionality. <laughs> oh, look at these pictures. That's Megan, I presume. and. That's the dog that um, got put down, Kubrick. I see. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to mean. Again, you can't read most of it, sadly. But yeah, let's have a look at that hidey hole. Uh, the janitor said there's something behind the screen? Um, well, I'm, I'm not seeing it though. 
And yeah, I can't can't pick up any stuff. Advanced clock building, ingenious me mechanical devices, the automata of Al Jazari. Al Jazari's so-called elephant clock, conceived in 126, was not only the first iteration of a water-powered timepiece capable of accurately registering the hours of the day in their irregular length, but also first to utilize the aesthetic device of clockwork automata, a chopping bird and human striking a symbol. The length of the clock's hourly intervals could be programmed by the adjustment of a flow regulator mechanism. Al Jazari's de later designs, building on his works with hydro-powered automata and detailed in his writings appearing in his book of knowledge of ingenious mechanical devices would include the castle clock. This mechanism is widely regarded by many scholars as history's first programmable mechanical the analog computer system and in addition to showing the passage of time it also featured a display of the celestial zodiac and the orbits of the sun and the moon interesting not sure why you would have that around is this some sort of special interest of yours Jensen um Dedicated terminal. What does this do? Oh, is this how I open the hidey hole? Secret stash. Secure access only. Ah. Okay. There we go. Bunch of stuff. Another unlocking device. Take the credits. Armor piercing system and yeah, I need to do something about my inventory. Well, I'm going to get rid of that one for now and I guess the ammo for it too. Um, I don't know if I need the grenades but I should have a little bit more space in my inventory now. Let me take this stuff. And what exactly does this do? Negates all armor bonuses, including those from dermal plating for a 10 mm pistol. Okay, I can combine it with a pistol. Oh, achievement unlocked. Up the ante. Again, I'm not sure if I ever want to use a pistol, but. There may come the time when I decide that I can't do it non-lethal, so I don't want to get rid of all my weapons. But yeah, um, I guess I found the secret hidey hole. And I'm not sure if there's anything else in this place that's of interest. We've got a kitchen here. And apparently Jensen lives on cereals alone. And some peas and soup. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I think the episode is actually getting long enough. So I'm going to make a cut here. And I would like to uh, do some of the side quests next, I think. So that's what I'm going to do in the next episode. As usual, thank you for watching and see you again next time.